So I sit on here watching the news and I see snow in Atlanta. And I say, thank you, Jesus. I'm having, well, there's some rain. But usually it's a bright Christmas we have here, not a white Christmas. It looked pretty, you know, but I don't think we would want to have to be in it, you know what I mean? So, and then my mind starts to wonder. And I wonder about Christmas when I was a little girl. Oh, yes, man. In the hills of Clarendon at Smithville. Oh, tangerine come in, man. Yes, when fruits are in season, we say then come in. And I love that about Christmas, the tangerine and the gungo. You know, you see the gungo blossom come up October, November, and you have gungo, green gungo. I love that with your rice and peas. Yes, red peas too. And they have a peas named Christmas peas, you know, a little red peas, Christmas peas. When you make your rice and peas with that, oh, it's red and pretty and beautiful. But in addition to that, all the preparations that we used to do, see, we had to take down everything out of the cabinet if you had cabinet or, or the cupboards or whatever and wash them every plate every tumbler every glass every everything had to take down and wash and put back all the lamp shades you had to wash the home sweet home lamp shade them and clean up the lamp extra special and trim the wicks that is how we used to prepare you understand and then of course you know you'd have been fattening up one of the fold them mm -hmm. the free range fold them call it now come on fold yard fold leg on pull it you know and you fix that you fatten that up for Christmas so that is what you're going to have with the beef that you'd buy as well if you're going to have beef and for the pork eaters you know they would have them pork and all of that but the preparation also meant going outside and tidying up the yard yeah you sweep and your bush and you cut back and you trim and you prune all of that and then you get your whitewash and your whitewash, whitewash is torn them that along the walkway going to the yard and you whitewash the tree trunks and you whitewash the outside of your gate it. and that white wash is you know what it is white lime really you know and that is how you bring a little extra special to your surroundings and and, and how to in the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth a town in Galilee to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favoured. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary, you have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come on you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age and she who was said to be unable to conceive is in her sixth month for no word from God will ever fail. I'm the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left her.
common for the Christmas cards from the year gone by the year gone by to be still hanging in the hall yes we had a hall not a drawing room or a sitting room or a den we had a hall and we have the cards hung up on piece of string one from the corner to that the corner and all of the card them come from America and come from England and come from Canada and come from Jamaica my grandmother and my mother put them over the piece of string in the hall and we would look at them from time to time that was another way that we observed Christmas and then the Fifi and the Shibum that you would get at Grand Market. And every square, every community had a square or a crossroads and Grand Market. And then you had a bigger Grand Market down at Frankfield, seven miles from Spitzville, and a bigger one still down at Maypen. And that is when the children and them parents and them grandparents and them brother and them sister, them gone at Grand Market and they'll come back till all near midnight, you know. And then, you know, you put away your things and, you know, one of the things then that you stamp on Christmas morning, you know, when you go to church, you have to get up early and get ready. And you have to walk to church and you call up in the hill that climbed and then, you know, and you have on your shoes from the year before as a child. So it's tight and you walk and the shoes are bun, you know, you see mini, mini and starlight. But rest assured, one of the presents you was going to get when you go back home after church was a new pair of shoes and they stuff the toy with newspaper. Mm -hmm. So that as your foot grow, then take out some of 
newspaper so your foot set into it so you know we couldn't afford to buy a new pair of shoes every six months that wasn't cutting it at all not at all and the junk you know, for those people who had junk you know, now, the junk you know, band would come through with the various character and the fife and the great and the drum you had pitchy patchy you had belly woman mm -hmm. and by the way you know, all of the junk you know, characters are most of them were men dressed up so you had belly woman and the belly woman the pregnant one was a man dressed up you had devil you had um, cowhead you had houseboat you had Jack in the Green, you have picked me tell the picture patch already. John could remember the movie and they picked them free day to see, but they want to hear the excitement, you know. And when they did it, did it, did it, did it, did it, did and they picked them and they hang on upon their mother's skirt and they hide between their legs because the devil go after them, so and they scream and thing. That was part of what made it such great fun, man. The John Kuno. Hi, Christmas. Sometimes they say that it is the darkest before the dawn. Well, this certainly has been a long night. I can't sleep now. There's too much to think on. And yet I cannot think because it's just too much. So I am sitting here, looking east, waiting for the sun, looking for the bright morning star, getting ready to rise again and face the world. Things weren't exactly easy yesterday, but I thought I have things worked out then. I loved Mary, I love her still, but it just seemed best for everyone to let her go quietly. Of course there were alternatives, it can get very nasty when this sort of thing comes out. And I was angry. I thought about making a spectacle of her until I realised it would not look good on me either. Besides, deep down somehow, I knew I wasn't perfect. Did I really want to start throwing stones? And so I did what I thought best. A quiet settlement. She goes her way, I go mine, and we carry on somehow. But then, a dream, a dream unlike any I had experienced before. Not confusing and bizarre, but crystal clear and full of authority. I'm tempted to say it was irresistible, though of course I could have denied it all. Maybe it is just that we have been waiting for something for so long, hoping against hope. Waiting for a word. Waiting for someone someday. Maybe it was the name Jesus. Like a reminder of something too important to forget and that promise. He will save people from their sins. Too much to take in. Too much to ignore. Too much. And yet, I find myself hopeful for the first time in a long time. I don't understand. What do I know of saving people from sins? I am a simple carpenter. All I know is wooden nails. What can I say? I hope, I believe. For now, I must just get on. Father God, we thank you for another year, another Christmas that you have given to us, Father God. As we're about to celebrate uh, Christmas with families, Father God, let's remember the ones who were isolated, the ones who are lonely and homeless, Father God. Provide for them, Father God. Be a comfort to them, Lord God, as you provide and be a comfort to us, Father God. We give you thanks and praise to your name. Amen.
O oh Lord, gracious Heavenly Father, who art in heaven, O oh Lord, we just give you thanks and praise, O oh Lord, this Christmas season. O oh Lord, as we just remember, O oh Lord, the time when our Lord Jesus was born, gracious Heavenly Father, and he was born to save our sins. And O oh Lord, at this time, Lord, gracious Heavenly Father, I just put through, put towards your feet all people, gracious Heavenly Father. O oh Lord, I just pray for the people, O oh Lord, specifically in every one of us, O oh Lord, this year, who have lost our jobs, O oh Lord, gracious Heavenly Father, and have struggled through the recent pandemic that we are facing, particularly are struggling in this Christmas season, O oh Lord. O oh Lord, we know, O oh Lord, that you are God and you are here to lead us. O oh Lord, but many of us are going through difficult times, O oh Lord, so I just pray, O oh Lord, that all provisions shall be given where needed, gracious Heavenly Father. And I just thank you, O oh Lord, that you are here and you always do come through for us, Lord. So I pray in faith today and I give you thanks. I give you thanks, O oh Lord, for being God and for being, O oh Lord, our Lord and Saviour. I give you thanks and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Little Bo Peep has lost our sheep and doesn't know where to find them. Leave them alone and they'll come home, wagging their tails behind them. <laughs> as if, in my experience, there is no such thing as a homing sheep. When they go astray, they stay astray, unless we go and find them. And that's what we do up here, forgotten by most people. It's cold and dark and cut off. But tonight, I don't want to moan because something has changed. Not so much in my circumstances. We're still here, in the night with the sheep, out of sight, out of mind. And yet, I don't feel alone anymore. I have been noticed. For last night, the darkness ripped open and the sky this sky was full of light. I think God wanted to grab our attention. Well, we were certainly grabbed. In fact, we were terrified. It was awesome and bright and different and strange. It was glorious. I guess God is like that. It unsettled us for a and settled us good and proper. Don't be afraid. That's what they said. God is always saying that. Don't be afraid. I guess it bears repeating because most people feel scared a lot of the time. That's why I never get frustrated with the sheep. Because in some ways, I think I'm a lot like them. I need a helping hand someone to watch over me. Don't be afraid, but come and see what's happening. And so we went. Who wouldn't? And what we found was very ordinary, and yet very wonderful. A baby, just like we had been told. A baby with grateful parents, tired and smiling. To us, the joy was that we had something to say, something to add, something which lent the ordinary moment an extraordinary potential. This baby is not just any baby, he said. Let us tell you what we have been told. And that's what we did. Now we are back here where we were before, watching. Most people don't think of us. Most people take us for granted or ignore us. But God has seen us. He has let us in on his greatest surprise. We are loved, it seems. And that makes all the difference. Oh, 
And then we have a sing. We have Christmas carol. When you go to church, you sing um, all the Christmas carols. But then there's Christmas songs. And there are Jamaica Christmas songs. Christmas a come me wa me lama. 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 Not a hat to me head me wa me lama. Not a shot to me back me wa me lama. Not a boot to me foot me wa me lama. Christmas a come me wa me dege de. And you go on and you go on. But you know. In you know, the preparation, you know, we used to have to get the coconut brush. Mm -hmm. Me still keep one. And the wax. That after you go a bush and you chip the, the bark off of the tree and you boil that for dye. And you take like a straw dye in it. And you take your coconut brush mark at the house of the clean board floor, you know. And when you are clean, you are knock a little rhythm. Morning, Mr. Potter. Morning to you, sir. I come to lodge a complaint to you now, sir. We plant a piece of red, piece of red, sir. The land, Mary Jane and Pigeon, come eat it out, sir. Come out of me yard. Me never call you, yeah. Come out of me yard. Me never call you for the house rent money not done pay for 
we had to clean the floor. You could have seen your face night when we done. I remember the rice and peas when I tell you about. If you never had a dry coat, that to put in there, it may not go work. So all of them powdered coat, which means you know, I use a powder coat and I'm about to be about them. You have to have your dry coat and have to put in them uh, and you broke your coat that and your greater coat and so that greater piece of your fingertip too. And then you have to have, you know, as you sit down and you prepare, you have your mug a little, your inner meal mug, man, that crucial, critical. And you put picnic, get milo and cocoa and the whole one them get coffee and tea and so on. But right now, we have a fancy Christmas mug. It have the ah, till the palm state upon it. But Merry Christmas. If you're overseas, Merry Christmas. If you're there in Jamaica, Merry Christmas. And remember, remember the real reason for the season. What well, good. Sing and heaven and nature sing and heaven and heaven and nature sing. Joy to the world, the Savior reigns. Let men their songs employ. For fields and floods, rocks. Repeat the sounding joy, repeat the sounding joy, repeat, repeat the sounding joy. He rules the world with truth and grace, and makes the nations prove for glory. His righteousness and wonders of his love, and wonders of his love, and wonders, wonders of his love, and wonders, wonders of his Good, he's asleep. There is a lot to wonder about when you become a mother. New life with all its potential, an array of possibilities. A new life and a new love which overwhelms you and fills you with joy. And concern, a lot of concern. The world becomes full of what ifs. What if he doesn't sleep? What if he doesn't eat? What if he's ill? What if I can't cope? That's all wonderful, but also routine. I've seen mothers with children ever since I've had eyes to see, and all these things are remarkable and commonplace. I feel all these things too, but there is more. I think it'd be true to say that my boy comes with more what ifs than most. What if he grows to become all that has been promised? What if he's not able to bear the responsibility? The expectation, the joy and the pain. What if people don't understand? What if everybody demands of him? And what if they don't get what they want? What if? What if it all goes horribly wrong? What if I'm there to watch? What if I can do nothing to help? What if he is the one we have been expecting? What if he is the one who will save us from our sins? What if all our hopes and all our fears come down to this? Him, it is good to see him sleeping, so peaceful. Perhaps that is enough for today. I look at him and can't help but wonder, what if? Since the day the angel came, it seemed that everything had changed. The only certain thing was the child moved within on the road that would not end winding down to Bethlehem so 
so far away from home Just a blanket on the floor Of a vacant cattle store But there the child was born She held him in her arms And as she laid him down to sleep She wondered will it always be So bitter yet so sweet And is she seeing in the straw by his head a thorn And is she smell Seals tumble down the centuries. A virgin shall conceive, God with us, Prince of Peace. Man of sorrow, strangest name of Joseph, there it comes again. So bitter, yet so sweet. And it came to pass in those days that a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This census first took place while Quirinius was governing Syria. So all went to be registered, everyone to his own city. Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea to the city of David which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed wife, who was with child. So it was, that while they were there, the days were completed for her to be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. Now there were in the same country shepherds living out in the fields, 
keeping watch over their flock by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were greatly afraid. Then the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Saviour, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be the sign to you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. Good Christmas morning. It's a pleasure to greet you and to share with you on this day when many Christians around the world celebrate the birth of our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ. We don't know what day he was actually born, of course, but he was born. And the Bible goes into great details about that birth. For me, the birth of Christ became particularly important when I got to college. I was a Christian from childhood, but it's when I got to college and met students of other faiths, one faith in particular, that who Jesus is, what Christianity is about, got really challenged. And I had to dig deep. Not that I really had doubts, but I, will, I needed to be able to defend the faith, but also to satisfy myself once and for all that Jesus is who he claimed to be. And per perhaps one of the most important aspects of the study I had to do was on his birth. And that is why the birth of Christ is so important to me, because I realized that Jesus could not be parented by two fallen human beings, otherwise he could not be our saviour. And therefore the virgin birth and the circumstances surrounding it are vital to Christianity. And the scripture tells us all of this from the Old to the New Testament. Isaiah talks about a virgin shall bear a son. He also said, unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. Micah says, this Saviour is going to come out of Bethlehem. And the Gospel writers, Matthew, gives us details of his birth. And Luke gives us great details about the birth of Christ and the circumstances surrounding it. But in the passage that's read in Luke 2, one of the things that is most striking is that this most significant of births takes place in a stable, a lowly place where animals are kept because there was no room in the inn. One would have thought that such a significant birth, God would orchestrate it, that it's the angels who came to announce it would be announcing it to Caesar Augustus or maybe King Herod or to the Sanhedrin or to chief priests, people of renown, people of importance. But no, ordinary people, shepherds watching their flocks by night. The announcement was made to ordinary people, shepherds, and the birth took place in an ordinary place, a stable. Why? Maybe God did it that way, that it would tell us, tell the world that Jesus came for everyone. And no one would have to feel that it's, he's not for me. He's only for important people. And in fact, there aren't any levels of people when it comes to fallen humankind 
we are all in the same state. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. All are in need of a savior, regardless of our status in this world. But the beauty of the narrative in Luke is how he contrasts the extremely down-to-earth, ordinary, not at all special, with the spectacular, supernatural, wow factor. As it says in Luke 2.13, and suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. What excitement. What excitement for these shepherds to receive this presentation on an ordinary night. And that excitement transmitted to them, you'll find if you read further in the passage, they hasted to Bethlehem to see for themselves. And they became the first human evangelists. So angels, picture it. Angels, a whole heavenly host, were excited about the birth of Christ. But they're not fallen. They don't need a savior. So the question is, should angels be more excited about the birth of Christ than you? Should angels be more excited about the birth of Christ than me? Shame on us if angels would be more excited about the birth of Christ than us when we're the ones who were fallen. We're the ones who are in need of a savior. We're the ones he came to save. So we should be excited. The gospel is exciting. What Jesus did for us is exciting. It's what Reverend John Driver called a wonderful story of love. He said, angels with rapture announce it. Shepherds with wonder receive it. Sinner, or won't you believe it? Wonderful story of love. But it's more than just being excited, isn't it? We have to translate that excitement into opening our hearts to Christ. There was no room for him in the inn. The question is, is there room for him in your inn? Your inner being. If there isn't, then I would encourage you with the words of Isaac Watts. Let every heart prepare him room. That is the effect that the birth of Christ ought to have on every one of us. As we reflect on that today, throughout this season and throughout our lives. Have a happy and a peaceful Christmas. And may you have a wonderful time with your family and friends, both in person and virtually. God bless you.
to crown him again, king forever, ceasing never over us all. Thank you so much for joining us for the Christmas Day Connection. Whatever you're up to this Christmas, we pray your time will be full of peace and rest and that amidst the eating and drinking and laughing, that you don't forget the real reason for our celebration. We'd like to acknowledge all of those families who have lost loved ones this year and for which this is their first Christmas without that special someone. May the Lord bless and keep you. May he cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. If you'd like to know more about New Life Hurtington, you can visit us online, www.newlife.org.uk, or you can connect with us on any of our social channels. So until we meet again, have a very Merry Christmas and a happy and blessed 2021. Season greetings to New Life Erdington, to family and friends and the community. I'd like to wish you all God's richest of blessings throughout this season and the coming year. In the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Merry Christmas everybody. I hope you have a wonderful day. God bless you all. Merry, Merry Christmas, Christmas and a happy, happy New, New year. year. Stay safe. Merry Christmas everyone. God bless you all.
God bless you. Merry Christmas. Happy Christmas, everyone. Have a great day. God bless you. Hi, Ryan and Jackie here. We just want to wish you all a happy Christmas and a peaceful New Year. And we just look forward to seeing you in the New Year at some point. God bless you all. Bye. Bye. You must fight, be brave against all evil. Never run or even lag behind. If you should live for God and the right, just keep on the fiery line. My brother, just keep on the fiery line. My sister, just keep on the fiery line. God bless you all. I love you. Happy, happy Christmas. God bless you all. Hello, Eddington family. Wishing you a wonderful, warm Christmas and New Year's. We thank God that it's him who has brought us this far. And it is also him who will carry us by his grace beyond this point. Have a wonderful Christmas and New Year's. Take care. God bless. Bye. Have a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. From the Buckners. Good morning, everyone. Hoping you all have a wonderful blessed christmas from the haydens merry, merry christmas, christmas. <laughs>